is the fly goes up and away we go, charging up through the gears, up towards Drum Banneker. John Donham on the R1 Yamaha in the lead, Joey Dunn up in second, Jason Griffiths is in there as well, along with Dennis McCulloch. Here we come up towards Glen Arm, the first time round Glen Arm, and it is indeed John Don from Joey Dunlop, then I believe that was Dennis McCulloch in third, and we'll see it looks like Adrian Archibald in fourth and Jason Griffiths in fifth position. Coming down over the roller coasters for the first time, John Donnan on the R1 Yamaha, Joey Dunlop on the RC45 Honda, and it looks like Adrian Archibald has just got ahead of Dennis McCulloch into third. Rounding the turns in this tight, twisty circuit, a 2.6 mile glass log circuit, you can see the silage bales there. They were drawn in by the tractors through the weeks. Now we're being raced round by 1,000 cc and 750 road racing machines. John Donnan leads. Joey Dunlop still in second. Here we come. It's still the R1 Yamaha of John Donnan. Then Joey Dunlop. Adrian Archibald and Chris Dowd's 900 Honda. They're in third position. Dennis McCulloch, the first of the 250s, in fourth position. Here we come into Smithy's end for the first time. Number 12, John Donnan leads. Joey Dunlop in second. Adrian Archibald third. And then Dennis McCulloch still holds fourth. In the station corner and through the start and finish area to complete another lap. The signboards go out there on the right hand side, letting riders know what position they're in. Up through John Bonnaker again on these big machines where he's accelerating up to 160 miles an hour on country roads. Absolutely incredible. So we wait for the race leaders coming into Glen Ann. Number 12, John Donnan. Number 3, Joey Dunlop. They round the Glen Ann section. Just coming past the churchyard on the left-hand side and then down into that frightening, very sharp left-hand turn at Flax Mill. John Donnan, Joey Dunlop and Adrian Archibald. And a fantastic pace already been set by this leading group of riders because they're already catching up on the back markers. Number 56, Kenneth McRae from Killalay. But here come the leading group, and Joey Dunlop is certainly getting much, much closer now to John Donnan, the R glass man. John prepares a lot of the machines, the engines for the machines that he's racing against, and he's got every ounce of power coming out of this R1 Yamaha at the moment. John Donnan from Joey Dunlop. Joey Dunlop looks up the inside, but John Donnan has it covered as he comes round, Smithy, and then back into the station corner, up through the start and finish area again. John Donnan tucks in behind the bubble. Joey Dunlop, and certainly Joey Dunlop much, much closer now. John Donnan goes through, heading up towards John Banner. Joey Dunlop gets the wheel, the wheel of the RC45 just paws the air there as they head up towards the top of the circuit and Joey Dunlop looking around the outside as they disappear under the hedgerows there. We'll see who comes out on tops and it still is John Donnan only just from Joey Dunlop. John Donnan leads, Joey Dunlop in second, coming round Glen Ann once again. John Donnan will be praying, praying that he can hold on as he passes the church down into Flax Mill Turn. Some riders appear from below the trees. Oh, it's back markers, it's back markers. Will this play a significant role in this race? And Joey Dunlop, the yellow helmet of Joey Dunlop is in the lead. Joey now takes the lead in this Lambert and Butler open race. Joey Dunlop leads. John Donnan in second as they lean into the left-hand turn. Turning into Donnero now. Let's see, and a local competitor, number 38, Ron McKenrick there from Glasslock. He should know these roads fairly well, but he's about to be gobbled up by Joey Dunlop. Joey Dunlop gets through. John Dunlop, oh, and John Dunlop, he's been blocked. Joey Dunlop has got the advantage. Coming out of the trees once again, Joey Dunlop passes another back marker. Then John Dunlop lines the back marker up as well. Joey Dunlop, hard on the brakes. Changing down through the gearbox of the RC45 Honda. John Donnan, then we get a glimpse of number two, Dennis McCulloch, the first of the 250s. Number 49 is Jason Griffiths. Jason of the PGO team. R1 Yamaha, but Jason's well off the pace in this one because here is the pole setter. It is indeed Joey Dunlop, the familiar yellow helmet once again of Joey Dunlop. Leans into the turn there. And the last lap flag goes out, so Joey has one more lap to possibly chalk up another race win in his illustrious career. Joey Dunlop goes through, then we look to see John Donnan now dropping off the pace in second. Joey comes round the Glen Ann series of corners. Just changes the machine into the left-hand turn, past the church. For the final time, is Joey Dunlop going to set himself up for the Ulster Grand Prix with a race win here in this Lambert and Butler open race? Down the roller coaster, Joey Dunlop just sits up from behind the bubble over the jump, the front wheel just pawing the air, a little bit of a quiver there as the RC45 shakes over the jump. And when will this man ever give up? Joey Dunlop leading this race now by quite a substantial margin. His veteran, 47 years old, he's won more road races than I care to remember. 
Coming into station for the final time. Joey Dunlop down through the gearbox, leans the machine into the left hander. You'll see the waves and you'll hear the cheer any minute now because Joey Dunlop wins the race. Number three, Joey Dunlop. Second finisher there was. Official confirmation Dunlop wins, Dunlop in second, Adrian Archibald third, setting Joey up for Dundrod. Ah, that's my favourite course, you know, all so well there, and I really like it. It suits my type of riding anyway, because it's all the quick sort of bends, you know. And you'll probably be going in what, five or six races? No, I'm going on six, I think. I'll stick it. <laughs> I like to concentrate on the 750. I'm going well on this year, and it's going well, and I'm going to try and save myself for the two 750 races. Yes, you're trying to turn the tables on the Yamahas, aren't you? I'll let you go out there, man. I had bad luck at the Northwest, but I didn't get, had trouble with the bike and I didn't get at it. And the TT I had tired problems. And I'm looking forward to also going free now. We're on the fifth lap of the McIlvenny Motors Grand Final, and it's Joey Dunlop leading from that man once again, John Donnan, in second. And there's your race leaders. But following them is number six, Gary Dine, then it's Owen McNally, and right behind Owen is number 13, Adrian Archibald, on the Chris Dye 900 Honda. Joey Dunlop, both wheels off the ground. John Dunham, one wheel off the ground and over to the left-hand side as well. These two riders are really pushing to the limit. Gary Dine's the first of the 250. And there's number two, Dennis McCulloch. He's back in sixth position. Joey Dunlop comes round to complete yet another lap. Oh, and Joey Dunlop side, John Dunham right onto the grass. And it looks like it could be ignition problems have ruled Joey Dunlop out of this race. What disappointment for Joey Dunlop. So John Dunlop leads on the final lap of the race. He's looking for his second race win of the day. Just rounding Glen Ann, but look at Gary Dines. Gary Dines on the 250, Francis Neil Honda, now right behind John Dunham. John Dunham gets the wheel in the air. Gary Dines, and look at the back markers again. Coming into the final bend, it's like Piccadilly Circus here. The two race leaders dicing down towards stage and corner. John Donnan and Gary Dines is going around the outside. Gary Dines, John Donnan. John Donnan and Gary Dines cross the line now. That's so close, we'll have to leave it to the official timekeepers to call the result. The official confirmation then. John Donnan gets the nod, but despite two wins on the day, not looking forward to the Ulster. No, we wouldn't be a lover of this place. Uh, it's big, fast, sweeping bends, and I don't go good at that. Uh, our next good goal will be Corridor and Killalane. I would be keen on the narrower roads and rougher roads, more so than the like of the Ulster. Yeah, it suits us fine. The Ulster will suit the other two podium finishers fine, though. Second place, Gary Dines, and the third finisher, Adrian Archibald, both looking forward to tomorrow. Both are men in form, and Archibald's a course winner at Dundraud earlier this year. Dundrod is a circuit I had trouble with for a few years, but now you seem to have got the hang of it. And a one there in June was nice. Now, earlier this year, a lot of people were, a lot of riders were moving to Yamaha, but you've stuck with Honda. Yes, that's right. I've rode Hondas now for five or six years, and it's still a very good bike. I didn't panic like the rest, and the Honda's doing a good job for me. I've rode the 600 bike now for a long time. It would be the one I'd be best on, but the 900 is also a good bike and we're getting the hang of it now, sorting out a few problems, but everything's starting to go well. Dennis McCulloch and Owen McNally share a few tips and perhaps put on a little bit of a wager, but we're back on the line for the start of the 250 race. We're away, and let's see who gets that drive up towards the Drum Banneker. Owen McNally leads. Gary Dines is right there in second. Joey Dunlop and John Creep also in among the bunch. Look at the bunch of riders through these narrow, twisty roads. Owen McNally, Gary Dines, Joey Dunlop, John Creep. That's the first four riders through. A fantastic pace being set in the opening lap of this 250 junior race. Owen McNally leads. He's already won the Regal 600 race here today and he won this corresponding 250 race last year at Glasslaw. Round the turn, Joey Dunlop still in there in third position. 
And then a stream of riders come down over. Cassie Doan, a real wiggle there by number nine, Owen McNally. Gary Dines close in second. Joey Dunlop third. John Creese still the fourth place runner. And a fantastic job done by the Monaghan Club and Monaghan District Council on this glass log circuit for today's event. And Owen McNally takes a look over his shoulder, but he needn't worry because he's ahead of this top class field in today's junior event. Already he's starting to catch the back markers from Coleraine on the Bob Mullen Motors Honda, Owen McNally. Laps the back marker safely through. Owen McNally setting up blistering pace, tucks down in behind the bubble of the fairing, a little bit of a wobble there, but safely through. And here's the battle for 12 between Jeff McMullen, Martin Finnegan and Raymond Hanna. All jockeying for position. These riders really enjoy their road racing. For the years, Mr. Oh, and Raymond Hanna's off. He's got a high side thrown right over the bars and onto the ground. The marshal's quickly on the scene. They're going to clear the debris. The replay of Raymond Hanna coming in. You'll see the back end stepping out, pitched right over the handlebars and smack onto the tarmac. Back to the leader. McNally charges on. Coming out of the trees, Owen McNally heads towards Cassidy's at something approaching 135 miles an hour. He is the pole setter setting the pace. And there's the gap now, an increasing gap because the second place man, Gary Dines, just dropping off the pace a little bit. Owen McNally in absolutely fantastic form today at Glasslaw. He goes home for the race win and will surely set him up for next week's Ulster. A wheelie in celebration as he crosses the line. Gary Dines still in second. And confirmation of the official results. Well, Owen McNally, a 250 winner at the Ulster Grand Prix for the last two years. Can you make it three in a row? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, the bike's actually been sorted out at the minute, so uh, doing quite a bit of work. They're brilliant, like Gary. As you know, she does. She only comes out once the blue moon, but uh, there's a guy on it at the minute, so uh, hopefully she's ready at uh, the time, you know. So uh, if all goes well, it should be like. The thing is, the Hondas are all catching up now, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the Pretty is still a good bike, but I think the Honda's is nearly as strong, so it could be a bit tired this year. One man hoping to polish up his act is Gary Dines. A podium finisher at the Ulster last year, can he improve on that tomorrow? Uh, well, I think we can, if, the, if everything goes according to plan on the day and with no mishaps. Uh, that all depends. Ian Locker and Dennis McCullough and Owen McNally, those boys will have something to say about that, I'm sure, but we'll give it a, a go anyway. And here's another man who have a lot to say about proceedings, Robert Dunlop. He's won at the TT, he's won at the Grand Prix, and he's won at the North West. This is the Super Kings 125 race, the most competitive race on the programme. We're almost ready for the off, and indeed we're away. The stream of charging, screaming 125s head up towards the top of the circuit. And number 12 in the lead, that's Aaron Burns, then number 55, Darren Lindsay. And the whole pack of riders come round. Look how tightly these riders are bunched in this 1-2-5 race. It's McCulloch from McNally. Then Darren Lindsay. We're out in the country again. And Owen McNally pulls out of the slipstream and goes past Dennis McCulloch. Owen McNally leads. McCulloch in second position. And the rest of these 1-2-5 riders stream through. McNally, McCulloch. Owen Darren Lindsay having a look up the outside. But not this time because McCulloch holds on to second. Owen McNally leads the pack into Station Corner. Dennis McCulloch in second position. Oh, and Darren Lindsay's overshot Station Corner. Darren Lindsay overshot the corner and he pulls back into the race in about eighth or ninth position. But no doubt about the man in the lead in this race, number one, Owen McNally. McCulloch and then all the rest of these riders stream through at about 130 miles an hour. Oh, and it looks like Alan Bud Jackson's day is over. He's a little bit disgusted, and we just heard that Dennis McCulloch has also dropped out of this race. That means that Owen McNally is now way out in the zone in this Super Kings 1-2-5 race. 
This is now what the race is all about. The race for second, third, fourth, and fifth. And just as quick as you can say that, that's the gap between those riders. Robert Dunn, oh, and Ian Locker almost over the front of the screen. My goodness, he looks back as much as to say, what was that all about? Here's the replay. Watch how far he goes over the front of the machine. Almost over the, onto the front wheel. Lucky Locker, how lucky was he that time? But Robert Dunlop squeezes up the inside of Darren Lindsay. Darren Lindsay back in the second. What a fantastic pit these three, four riders are setting here. And Joey Dunlop on the big men in the Honda. Not perhaps having the best of a season in the one two five class this year. But I'll never discount them for the Ulster Grand Prix. But here's this fantastic race for second, third and fourth. Darren Lindsay, Robert Dunlop and Gary Dines. Just as quick as you can say that. Second, third and fourth. Oh, and McNally, this man is stretching the lead. You can look down and see the others haven't even rounded station corner. Owen oh, McNally in a class of his own in this Super Kings 125 category. Darren Lindsay in second. Gary Dines back up to third and Robert Dunlap back one spot in fourth. This young man Lindsay has come right back through from eighth position. Now back up into second. Gary Dines has a look of no. Robert Dunlap and Ian Locker. And again, this man, so confident has his performance been today at Glasslock. He's just cruising around ahead of a star-studded pack of 125 Reddit riders. McNally stamping his authority all over this race, but Gary Dines, Robert Dunlop, Ian Locker battle it out for those top leaderboard positions. Gary Dines comes through. Then it's Darren Lindsay, Robert Dunlop, and Ian Locker, the man who's had such a, a moment just a lap or two ago. Owen McNally on the Bob Mullen Motors 125 Honda continues his relentless charge. Oh, and there's been a change for second. Robert Dunlop and Gary Dines. So Robert Dunlop moved up to second. Gary Dines in third. In fourth position, Ian Locker and Darren Lindsay has dropped back one spot to the fifth. What a tremendous strap this is for second, third, fourth, and fifth. So competitive, these 125 races. Every time they hit the tracks, the race seems to become more and more competitive. And here they come again. Robert Dunlop, Gary Dines, Ian Locker, and Darren Lindsay. As quick as you can get the names out. Oh, and looks like Locker tried round the outside, but that didn't work this time. My goodness, they all tuck into each other's slipstream. Oh, and here's the battle for eighth position. And that was a bit of a push and shove. And here's the replay. Just look how close they get. No pushing in this game, lads. But everybody safely round. Oh, and here's the battle for second. Robert Dunlop, Ian Locker, Gary Dines, and Darren Lindsay. As close as ever, these four competitors dicing it out for second to fifth. But again, that man in the front, Owen McNally, stretches, stretches his advantage over this raging battle for second. Robert Dunlop has the advantage. Oh, and Darren Lindsay almost tripped the back of the back marker there. My goodness, that was a close call. Inches between those two riders. But again, Robert Dunlop, Ian Locker, and Lindsay with that manoeuvre has moved himself up in the fourth position. My own earth that he managed to hold on. Gary Dines in fifth. No doubt about the race winner coming into the last lap. He has absolutely blasted a star-studded field. Coming round to pick up the checkered flag on his third race win of the day here at Glasslock. Owen McNally. But what about this fantastic battle? Oh, and Darren Lindsay. Darren Lindsay up the inside. It looks like Darren Lindsay will get second. Robert Dunlop just a touch behind in third. Ian Locker and a disappointed Gary Dines in fifth. So it's McNally from Lindsay and Dunlop. And Owen McNally would go on to win a second 1 2 5 race to make it four race wins on the day. It is a real tight class. You know, there's always four or five dice for the lead. And to win it, it's, it's really, really hard work. Well, they're all really, really hard work, but to come, out, come away with a 1-2-5, you know, it's, it's anybody's race usually at the last couple of laps, and uh, to come away with it, it would be really special. Well, the opposition's going to be really tight there, and it's largely the wee one two fives on the day, you know, they can give a lot of bother, and it's setting them up on the day, and um, everybody wants to win, don't they? <laughs> um, I'm really happy with top three, like. Really would. I've had a lot of trouble with the bike, but it's going well now, so I'm looking forward to the race. I think uh, I think the lap record will go, I think I'll probably break it, so if the other boys want to uh, come along, then they'll, they're going to have to go that fast, I think. Northwest and TT winner Ian Locker will certainly be going that fast, and not just on his 125. <laughs>
Yeah, it'll be nice to do the do the treble, you know, Northwest TT and the Ulster. Um, but I think also with the with the 500, I just really enjoy riding that bike, and um, hopefully I can do something on that against the big bikes of Jeffries and Duffus and and the other guys, you know, and Joey and. You know, so uh, we'll just have to see. I don't really know if the bike will be quite quick enough in a straight line, but uh, we were about eight, ten mile an hour down on top speed at the northwest, and we'll just have to see if uh, if it'll be quick enough at the Ulster. You know. There were a few anxious phone calls before David Jeffries was passed fit to ride, but the treble TT and Northwest winner is here and looking forward to his Ulster debut. Yeah, I mean, it, people keep saying to me, you know, I hope you come into the Ulster. And obviously, when I did my hand at Knock Hill, there was a lot of people up there who were, were quite disappointed, and as I was. And then when I saw my doctor said I could ride, I was really pleased because I enjoy racing in Ireland. People, they love the racing, and they, they genuinely are, or the, sorry, they are just genuine fans who really, really love racing. And it's, it is a privilege to come and ride over here because the fans just love it so much. Four time winner Owen McNally loved it in Monaghan as he burned off his rivals. Find out who left their mark at the Ulster Grand Prix in a special hour-long highlights programme here on UTV at 10 o'clock on Wednesday night.